Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Virgo. How are you? I hope you're having a wonderful week. I know things have been a little interesting out there in the world. Uh, it's been a lot of revelations and things coming to light and people finding their path and finding their way. And I wish nothing more for you than to just have support and clarity as you're on this journey, as we're all on this journey, but you specifically, because we're focusing on you, Virgo. All right, let's see. We're doing shadow work. So we're doing what our shadows have to say, and we're doing how to work with them, how to integrate this message or this uh, moment, and kind of how to find some peace and healing. So we're combining two of my readings that I usually like to do. So what's our message, our main topic from shadow? Ooh. This is just like a reoccurring thing. Scorpio's got this as well. So let's see what yours is about. So five of pentacles, feeling left out in the cold, feeling unsupported. Um, more so by like institutions, more so by like society standards, things like that, societal expectations. Not always necessarily like these specific individuals in your life, but more so of just like on a larger scale. So feeling like you kind of have to do this on your own. So let's see what else we have to say. What else does our shadow have to say? All right, so we're looking a little bit at the past. Ooh, okay, interesting. All right, sorry, there we go. So we're looking at the past, perhaps a bit fondly. I mean, some fond memories, some fond thoughts. I don't need to move this out the way somewhere. Uh, about the past uh, we may also have been feeling maybe like we were a little naive and perhaps who we put our um, who we decided to depend upon and who we decided to put some care and time and energy into but we have some new financial opportunities literally money in the hand love that for you Virgos I'm telling you Virgos you've, you're always doing the best okay new money opportunities are coming up new emotional creative opportunities are coming up your cup will be overflowing the money will be coming in and this is a new journey it's time to take the leap of faith so if you have tried this change before and perhaps it didn't work out or perhaps it's what put you into this space with this connection with these folks where you didn't end up being supported you know it's one of those things where it's like what lessons did you get from this what did you learn from this and to kind of use that as a springboard to continue to support you into this next endeavor. It, it will not always be this way. It will not always turn out like this. Um, the Queen of Cups is also saying that it's time to make sure that you're focusing on yourself, that you are making sure that you are taking care of yourself just as much as you are taking care of others. That in this time, you need to be very emotionally mature. So if you're looking on the past and perhaps you're wondering if you are being naive about this situation, if you're looking on the past and you're thinking, wow, that was really so great. I wish I was back there. Take the lessons from this situation and use them to emotionally mature, to grow up emotionally, to say, I have learned my lessons from this emotionally. Three of Swords is learning the lessons and putting them into practice intellectually changing the way that you're thinking about things, changing the way that you're looking about things so that you don't make those same mistakes. But this one is really saying that like you are older, you are wiser, you have learned. And it is time for you to put those things into practice. You're not getting these opportunities as like a joke from the universe to be like, haha, I'm going to leave you out in the cold again. You're getting these things so that you can move forward, so that you can put them into practice, so that you don't keep making the same connections or ending up in the same situations over and over and over again. You're able to see the progression and see how things change. You have to allow yourself the ability to be the fool, to trust in the universe, to trust that you are wiser and you can make different choices. Okay? All right. Let's see what else we get. What else is our shadow wanting us to pick up on? Ooh, a two of pentacles. Okay, so we go from the ace to the two. There's definitely some money stuff going on here. It's either money stuff. <coughs> this is not straight. Sorry, that's going to bug me. It's either money stuff or it is um, like material stuff. It is like body stuff, like health wise. I don't talk about health stuff, though. So if that's what's going on with you, you know, you're going to have to read into that yourselves. 
Um, but there's definitely some choices, some decisions, some options. Now, two of pentacles. We love two of pentacles because that's more fun energy. Ooh, yeah, time to go within. Time to go within. The moon is my shadow work card, but it is also about following your intuition, tapping into your intuition, checking in with what your instincts are telling you. That's what all those animals are about. Perhaps going within the unconscious and seeing what lessons, what information they have for you. What is being pulled from those recesses of your inner guidance? You're tapped into what's beyond just our material world. The towers are man-made. Those are things that are human structures. And so we have this moon raining down these yods, these fires, these flames of um, inspiration, flames of knowledge, flames of uh, rebirth even the light of the sun from the moon the light ref the moon reflects the light of the sun so it's like the wisdom from the sun without getting burned from its rays so it's like a kinder way of receiving illumination of receiving enlightenment and the invitation is to go within with into your unconscious following your instincts in order to make the same progress that you would to get the get the recognition that you would from the sun without getting burned right so go with it <laughs> rest a little bit um the four of swords is a card for rest have some fun enjoy yourself the interesting thing about this is that there uh, i don't really see this as anything that's pointing towards a decision <laughs> <laughs> so you have some options available to you. Maybe you are not seeing them. Maybe you're maybe you feel un unaware of them. Um, or maybe they're just showing up. And because of the strides that you're making and you jumping in and really kind of believing in yourself and what it is that you would like to create, that is opening up doors for you. And it's saying, you know, don't rest the process. Go within. Listen. Get clear. Don't rush the process. Now is not the time to make a decision. Two of uh, swords. Rest a bit. Let your mind rest. Take in the lessons from what has happened. Take in the wisdom from what has happened. Take in what you learned from the moon. And go have a little fun. Continue to build those cups. Continue to grow those cups. Continue to spend those times with those people who you love and who love you. We then get a, move this over just a little bit. We then get the two of swords. So uh, the clarity around what decision to make, you know, the options came in, they're fun, they're, they're all good, everything like that. But the clarity around the decision to make is not happening right now. Um, and I think there's maybe, because there's more work to be done internally, you have a lot of people showing up here. We have the queen of wands, which is, Tapping into that self-confidence, tapping into that inner fire, the emperor who is saying you need a little bit more structure, you need a little bit more attention, maybe planning a little bit more. Maybe it's just not time yet because you haven't you haven't had the opportunity to really go within and strategize um, and that the wheel of fortune is turning in your favor. I think we need to let some things externally continue to shift before you make any changes. So there's inner work for you to do and there's things happening externally to you and you need to let those things do their thing and don't rush into the process. You know that you're a hot commodity. You know that you have um, a lot to offer. So don't rush any processes that anybody external to you might be attempting to, to make happen. Um, all right, so we have the judgment card in reverse. So the judgment card is about new beginnings. It's about a rebirth process. It's about the enlightenment experience. And as this is coming from our shadow, our shadow is perhaps telling us that right now is not the time for the rebirth to begin. Again, it just seems like there is something internally quite a bit that, that you're discovering, perhaps exploring, getting in touch with. And that uh, there may also be... Hmm, there may also be some shadow work or some things to really examine when it comes to the situation around circumstances related to when your mother was pregnant with you, because that is one of the one of the interpretations of the judgment card uh, and possible judgment that she may have received or may have um, 
taken on when she was pregnant with you and how that may be impacting kind of how you view your purpose, your worth, your value uh, currently in the world. Five of Swords is indicating, because this is how we integrate this. This is how we heal with this energy. And it's saying right now that the rebirth is, is not now. That the integration is to look at the mother wound, uh, to look at the birthing process, the creation process more so. Look at the creation pro process. And to take a look at Five of Swords, which is around... Trust, trust in yourself, trust in the universe. We always start with trust in ourselves, balancing our heart and our mind, finding temperance, connecting to the angel, our self that our all knowing self, and then the seven of swords. Yes, okay, so, um, if there were things that occurred that really put you into a space where mentally you have perhaps lost trust in yourself, trust in your ability to nurture yourself, trust, or, trust in your ability to make wise decisions, to trust your intuition, to tap into your intuition. It is not, I, I don't really believe in coincidences. It's not a coincidence that the moon and the judgment card are sitting here right next to each other, um, which is both mothering energy that there is wisdom, that there is a lesson that has been learned. And I think it's time that you recognize that and you put it into practice, that you trust yourself, you trust that inner wisdom, you trust that the process that needs to happen, the rebirthing process that needs to happen, the, the mother wounds that may need to be cleared and cleansed and healed or just integrated and recognized. Sometimes we just have to recognize them and see them. We don't really have to do anything with it. We just need to know that it's there to know that it might be impacting how we view things, how we look at things, how we approach things um, that may be putting a sense of mistrust perhaps in ourselves, perhaps in others around us and in others to support us, institutions to support us, society and culture to support us in our endeavors. And that that may make it where we are overcautious, where we are scrounging away and we are planning in our heads about how to stay ahead, about how to make sure that the enemy never gets one up on us. And it puts us in a defensive state. And we need to recognize that that's happening and that the integration, the healing that needs to occur perhaps may just be with allowing ourselves to see this, to see this and how this is an underlying practice that impacts the things that we're doing, the way that we're approaching things. It may be why we're unable to make a decision if we have not gotten to a space where we're feeling completely and totally um, comfortable trusting ourselves because we feel like this is a pattern that continues forth. We do have the uh, uh, infinity symbol, the eighth symbol with the two of pentacles. And to really say, like, where do we need to balance our cups? We have a lot of cups here in the beginning. We have a three of cups here right now. We don't have a lot of cups moving towards the end. Where is there an imbalance, perhaps, in how we share our emotions and how we um, balance our own emotions? What wisdom is our unconscious trying to display to us about how we keep one foot on the land and one foot in our hearts, one foot in the practical realm and one foot in the emotional realm without moving into this space where we don't trust the people around us and we have to get these swords and carry them off the fields and have them ready so that, you know, we can use them to fight another day. Or And it's interesting because it goes four, five, seven. So four is a very stabilizing energy. But like we talked about, oh, well, that was in another video. But as I always talk about, you go from four to five because you cannot rest forever. 
<laughs> you cannot sleep forever. You cannot hide away forever. You can't just drink yourself away um, in celebration with your friends. You do have to move forward. And so we get this five of swords here to push us from to say that, like, get up because the battle isn't over. And not in a negative sense, but in a sense of just like life isn't over. Life hasn't ended. And so you have to get up. You get up. But in this case, this person's getting up and they're taking these swords and there's three of them here and two of them on the ground. And it's saying, OK, I've come out on the other side of this and I'm going to steal these things away. Not like this one, but just like in preparation. OK, I understand that, you know, we've come to the end. But now, as I always like to say with this one, it's the same way of nine of, of wands at what cost? Who did you lose along the way? The sorrow, the walking away, the things like that. It would cost. And so the fives are always pushing us outside of our boundaries. They're pushing us outside of our comfort zone. This five is pushing you outside of the comfort that the moon gives you, that the that the light loveliness of the mother, of the nurturing mother, of the of the unconscious where you can go and hide away and not have to deal with things and you can push the stuff that makes you uncomfortable. The five and the judgment card in reverse are pushing you outside of that. They're saying, no, 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 no. We need to take a look at that. In order for you to integrate this, you have to recognize where the mother, the creator, your ability to be able to come back, to come back is hindered. And what is the basis of that? And how do you find balance within that so that you don't, you are Perhaps being clever in how you approach things, but you don't have to be mistrusting of how you approach things. You can still have an open heart. We're going back to the very beginning of your reading, an open heart, but a wise, you're wise with your emotions. You're emotionally mature and allowing yourself to also mentally mature. You don't have to sneak or lie or cheat or anything like that. You can be clever. Yes. You're clever because you know better, not because you feel like the only way for you to get support and to get past this to succeed is to not be not be on the up and up, not be just straight about here and saying you don't have to steal away the swords from the enemy. You don't have to beat them at their game. You can just know that if you're able to approach this in a way that works best for you and to build up your world in a way, the emperor, like I said, you need more structure, you need more strategy. You need to be, you need to be in charge of yourself and where you're going so that you're not leaving things up to the enemy, up to the others, up to the external. Take charge of yourself. Take charge of your path. And allow this to, to, actually push you mentally and emotionally and and physically in your life into a new space and I believe that when you when you go through this process of integration the path the choice that you need to be making will become clear this is really long I am sorry there was a lot going on here there was a lot that came up here so I'm, I'm sorry but I'm not sorry I love you Virgos I'm going to pull Oracle cards. They'll be in another video. It'll be a much shorter video. <laughs> but yeah, I wish you the best. Take some time. Go within. Use that wisdom. Learn from the experiences. All right. I love you. I'll see you later. Bye.